deploying applications with Installation Manager. So far, we've talked about software installs onto our Citrix server, but we've only been talking about the manual installs, the, the old school next, 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 finish types of installs. But what happens if we want to make that install to more than just a few servers? If, if I've got you know, two or three servers to, to install that piece of software for, it's, it's, uh, it's not going to be that difficult. All we do is we log on to the server and, and complete the install and we're done. But what if instead of two or three servers, we have two or three hundred servers? In that case, logging into each individual server is going to take a long time. In this nugget, we're going to talk about how to package up software. We're going to talk about why we would want to do software packaging and, and what do we gain, stand to gain by doing it. We're going to talk about the components of Installation Manager. If you've never used Citrix Installation Manager, there are a lot of components of it that you've probably never seen before. So we're going to show you what each of those components are and how they interrelate. We're going to use Installation Manager to actually create some software packages and deploy some software packages to remote systems. As part of that, we're going to package up some MSIs and even some other installs because the process for packaging an MSI is slightly different than for other software installations. We're going to add those packages to our Citrix Management Console, which is the, the first step in getting it deployed for when we, automate, when we deploy that software through Installation Manager's automated deployment mechanism. But before we get into actually showing you what the, uh, what the, what the components of Installation Manager are, let's talk about the, the process of software packaging and what it is and why we'd want to use it first. If I've got a small number of applications and a small number of Citrix servers, the typical method of software packaging is pretty easy. You know, you, 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 you put the CD in the drive and you, you answer the questions that are required and, and eventually the, the files get copied onto the system, the registry keys get updated, certain DLLs get registered, and the software gets installed on my system. Now, an installer is nothing more than that. It does file copies, registry updates, DLL uh, registration, and those sorts of tactics. That's all it does. So if that's all it does, what's to say that we couldn't invent some sort of software solution that would encapsulate all of those file updates and registry updates and, and DLL registrations and, and create them as a silent installation so I don't have to answer all the questions. That's, that's what software packaging is. It's reconfiguring a, a, an installation that would require administrator input into one that does not require administrative input. Now, now, why would we want to use that? We use that because now, since that, since that software installation doesn't require administrator input, I can do it in an automated fashion. If the administrator doesn't have to sit at the console to answer the questions, then I can use another tool, Installation Manager is a tool in this, in this case, to deploy that package, push it down as an, as a, an executable, and, uh, and complete the installation without administrator input. Now, in order to do that, we have to have a number of components in place. When we installed Citrix Presentation Server, we had to enable the Citrix Installation Manager components. We had to make sure those were installed on our systems. Now, you'll notice here that there are a number of different systems that make up Installation Manager. First, here on the left, we have the Package Management Server. This server is used uh, this, is a, the, this is a Citrix presentation server that is used to manage the deployment of the packages. Now, this server can be a, a presentation server, this can be, uh, uh, a separate presentation server for management only. It can be a server inside the target farm. It can be a server that I'm deploying the packages to. It is just a server that I'm using to run the console in order to deploy packages. Now, there's also this concept of the packager itself. The packager is another Citrix presentation server that we use to install the packages. When we're, when we're compiling the, the, the installation into a package format, that packager is a, a Citrix presentation server that is generally has no software installed on it. It's a, it's a clean presentation server, if you will. So we have a clean presentation server. We run the packager utility. We start our installation and have that packager utility watch the installation and, and, and see what changes are made. Those changes are then compiled into an ADF file. If, it's, uh, if we're using a, a software installation or an MSI file, if I'm using an MSI installation, that, that software, uh, the, the bits for this software installation are kept on a file server somewhere. Now, this file server does not have to be a presentation server. It can be just a regular standard file server with enough space to store my packages. Again, 
So we have the presentation server here that, that controls or manages the software installation process. We have the packager, which is this clean presentation server that I will eventually install a package to or install software to to begin the packaging process. I then package it up in one of two formats and store it on the file server. Once the software is packaged, then I used the Citrix Management Console to push those software packages to target servers in the farm. Now, the Citrix ADF installer service needs to be installed on these systems in order for this to work. So one of the things you're going to have to watch for is to make sure that this ADF installer service, you'll see it's here under services, uh, that this ADF installer service is installed and started on those Citrix servers. Another important point is that this whole concept of installation manager only works if you're installing Enterprise Edition. So if you're, if you're installing uh, uh, Advanced Edition or the Standard Edition of Citrix Presentation Server, you're not going to get these components. You only get these components if you're installing Enterprise Edition. And so the first thing I'm going to show you is what this really looks like inside of the CMC. Now, we don't have any packages set up right now, so it's, we're going to see mainly what the structure of Installation Manager is. This is the, this is the same CMC we've been working with throughout, uh, throughout all the nuggets so far, and this is the, the Installation Manager node. You see we have packages here, and this is where the packages that we create, where those are going to be stored inside of the CMC. This is server groups. These are the, the groups of servers to which we are going to deploy packages. You'll see I have Nugget CTX servers here. This is our, our Nugget 1 and Nugget 2 server we'll, where we may deploy a package to. And then we have Summary, which is going to have some more information about applications that are uh, currently accessible and all the jobs that are currently awaiting uh, start or either awaiting the, the, the beginning of the job or have already completed. If I right click on the installation manager node here and we choose properties, you'll see that I'm gonna, the first thing I'm, we're going to need to do is create the network account and also the default file share location. This is the location like we talked about before where the packages are going to be installed. This is DC Nugget slash packages and this is a, a share that we've created on the DC Nugget server. Now, Obviously, you probably wouldn't want to make your file share location on a domain controller, but, but for our purposes, l let's put it here under this file share. We also have to give default network credentials for a domain account that's going to access this file share, and we put those up above. In the Options tab, we get the option to remove um, j expired jobs after a certain number of days, or, or, or never if we want to clear out those expired jobs, or how we, how we choose to either force users off or, or do not allow uh, servers to reboot if there are users actually on that server. That right now we have it checked here to force the users to log off before installing. Under reboot options, we can set how many minutes are available for before the, re the server reboots after the conclusion of the package and how long we're going to send messages or how often we're going to send messages to our users to let them know that an impending server reboot is about to occur. I can also choose options here to send a custom message to those users. Look out, here comes a new software package. And Although when you do this, you may want to consider uh, uh, letting them know that a reboot's about to occur and they may want to save their work. Now the first thing you'll notice here is that most of the rest of this is pretty empty. There are no packages available and there's nothing information, no, there's no information here under summary. So the first thing that we need to do in order to populate this with packages is actually create a package. So let's, let's do that now. I'm going to switch over to my other Citrix server. This is CTX Nugget 2. And this is my, my clean Citrix server. This, is, this server doesn't have really any applications installed on it. It's straight out of the box. And you'll see on the desktop here I have two programs that I've downloaded. I've downloaded WinZip and I've downloaded Microsoft Office 2003. And we're going we're gonna to package up both of these using the methods for each installation. You'll notice that WinZip here actually is a .exe file. And .exe files usually typically require some, some questions to be answered um, as part of the, execute, the, the installation. Now, to do .exe files, we have the Citrix in Packager utility. That's under Start, Programs, Citrix, Presentation Server, and then this Installation Manager Packager utility. I'm going to open that up now. You'll notice here that I get the option to create a new project using the project wizard, or if I want to open an existing project, I can do that as well. I'm going to create a new project using the project wizard here. The next screen appears that says, do I want to package an installation recording or an unattended program, or, or do I just want to package some selected files? Now, I want to stop for a second to talk about each of these in turn. 
For an installation recording, this gives me the option if that particular installation has uh, some questions it's going to ask me or, or if I need to give it some information to complete the installation, then I'm going to choose an installation recording. Now, if I have like a, like a service pack or a, or a hot fix or a patch or something that comes to me as an unattended program file or an already silent installation, then I'm going to choose to package an unattended program. And the third option here is selected files. Now, sometimes I may just want to deploy certain files to a particular server. And in that case, I would choose selected files. This would allow me to, to just deploy a, a series of files to a particular server. In, in this case, because I want to install WinZip, and I know that WinZip's going to ask me some questions, we're going to choose this package and installation recording. We click Next. And now we get the option to choose the project name and location. Now, you want to give your project name something pretty, pretty easily recognizable. In this case, I think it's WinZip uh, version 10. Probably a good idea also to give it a, a version number so we can differentiate the packages when we need to later on. Notice, note the project location here where the, where the, uh, where the uh, project is going to store its files while we're actually completing the packaging utility. Let's click Next. In this screen, we have the option of selecting the installation program itself. Now, if I click Browse, I believe that that program is sitting on the desktop right now, and I move to my desktop. There's the WinZip folder, and there's the WinZip 100.exe. That's the, that's the installation program that we want to install. Now, if that installation program has some command line parameters, perhaps a, a, a switch that sets a particular configuration or something like that, we can add that here under command line parameters. In this case, we don't. We're just going to run that winzip.exe, winzip100.exe file, and that will begin the installation. So I'm going to click Next to move to the next screen. In the Nugget on installing applications, we talked about the concept of application compatibility scripts. And these are growing less and less common, but these are scripts that are provided by a vendor that takes a, an otherwise normal installation and makes it terminal services compatible. In that case, if you have a vendor-supplied compatibility script, you would want to include it here. But in this case, because we just have the, the, the winzip.exe file, winzip100.exe file, we don't have that compatibility script. So we're going to click No and move on to the next screen. We're going to choose a build location. That build location would be C or C WinZip version 10, which is the location where those files are going to go. And we click Next. And we get the option of, of, of reviewing those settings that we've configured. You'll notice if we click Finish, it's going to begin the recording of the installation of the package. You'll see a couple of windows here. Here at the top is the recording window. It's discussing the initial program that started that uh, will actually be doing the install and the programs here, WinZip 100, that are running that are completing the install as well. If I move down the WinZip 10 setup window, you'll see I have the option of making sure that that recording window stays on top of all my windows. And then this button here, which tells the recorder to stop recording. Now, I'm not gonna, we're not going to hit that button until we've finished actually completing the install. So, so let's move this WinZip 10 setup window back up, and let's begin this setup just like we would a normal setup, just like we were installing this on a, on a workstation somewhere. We're going to answer all the questions. Uh, no, we don't want the Google toolbar. We don't want Google desktop search. We, uh, uh, we were going to make sure that the WinZip is installed with uh, the, the license agreement is clicked yes, and we want to make sure we start it in the WinZip classic mode. All of these, these, these questions that we would normally get asked if this were a default installation of WinZip. When the installation is complete, you'll see now WinZip launches. I want to close this down, and now that the installation is fully complete, I'm going to click this Stop Recording button. Now note, sometimes you may get an error message that says that the install program and or some of its spawned programs are still running. Are you sure you want to stop recording now? Some installations may not completely close up when, when you believe they're complete. So, so check the task manager when you get this to make sure that the installation is fully complete. In this case, I'm going to click yes because I want to stop the recording. You see that a box pops up that tells us to analyze the output window if there are any errors or warnings that happen during the analysis. I'll click through that, and it will complete the recording or the, the compiling of all the information that makes up this package. Now, let's take a look at this package and what we've actually done. You'll see on the left pane here that I have my WinZip version 10 project, and there's a number of items in this tree. I have project entries, which are, are what makes up the project. In this case, it's a recording with this path, any applications that may get installed to the start menu, the symbols that are included, 
for that, uh, for that package, any file system changes. Note that these are all going to the target directory for these files are being installed. And also any registry changes. If I scroll down through HE local machine and software and micronet computing and WinZip, these are the registry changes that are going to be entered into the machine when the package is installed on that machine. And also a history log for, for any issues that may have occurred during the packaging of this software. Now, it's said down here to, anal to check the, uh, the, the analyze options screen. Notice we have had no errors during posting, we had uh, no errors during build, and we had a couple of warnings here during the install. These are things that you're going to want to test while you're packaging your application. You'll notice also here under the project button that I have the option of adding additional components to my package after I've built it. If, I, if we need to add another recording, for example, we can do that here, or a compatibility script, or an unintended program, or even if, if we just want to add some additional files, we can add those files here. Lastly, we have the option of just building the package. This will actually complete the build of the package and, and, and wrap it up into that ADF file that we need. Now it's worth saying that when you go to this project location and you click build package, you're going to want to do this any time that you make a change to the package characteristics. You'll note that there are two locations on your system where package characteristics are going to be stored. If I go to the start menu and click run, uh, if we go to C program files Citrix IM packager projects, this is the default location where it's going to store the the kind of working location for my package. This this is the this is the uh, the log location where it's pulled out that log information that we looked at a while ago. Uh, you'll see here that here's ADF. This is where that ADF file may get posted. Uh, presently, it's empty. Uh, this is the package source location where the actual package bits are going to be located at. There's a second location also that you need to know, and that's what we put in earlier. What we put in earlier was C, uh, C colon backslash uh, winzip10. This is actually the completed ADF file. You'll notice that the ADF file has a WFS extension. Now, it's, it's, it's important for you to know that ADF files have a WFS extension, but this is the script that will take these files here, these bits here, and put them on the server in the appropriate location. Now let me go ahead and shut, close these windows because there's a couple more things I want to show you about this packager utility. When we first built this, uh, when we first built this package, we set our root location for C colon backslash, and that's what, because we wanted to build these packages local to the server. But that really doesn't do us a lot of good if we want to be able to deploy these packages from our file share. So I'm going to replace C colon backslash with DC nuggets slash packages here, and I also want to down here set the uh, installation manager database to CTX. Nugget 1, so that I can also make sure that I deploy the package characteristics to the installation manager database as well. There's one other location where you might want to change this as well, and that's under the project properties. Here, I get the option of selecting the name and the description and the version number, but this output location should also be set to the, files, the file share that I've configured for deploying packages. DC Nugget Packages, AGES. Now, you'll notice that we have some certain target operating systems that we configured when we first built the package. This is important that you filter those operating systems so this package will only go to certain operating systems. Also, you can set here to allow either a repeated install or also just to include an uninstall so that the package can be easily uninstalled later. I'm going to click OK. As with everything, any time that I make a change to my package, which I just did, i got to go to Project and rebuild the package. This is going to go and rebuild that package onto my remote file storage location. I then get the option to select a Citrix server, just like I put down there. When I do that, I will have successfully added the package not only to the package file share location, but also to the installation manager database. If I click OK here, and I switch back to my server that's uh, where I'm running the CMC, you'll now notice that I have a package for WinZip version 10 configured inside the installation manager database. After that package is complete, there is also the concept of rolling back the package. I may want to roll back my uh, packager server to a pristine state once again, and that's what this rollback key is here. If I click rollback, that's actually going to undo all the changes that was completed as part of the installation. I get the option of rolling back the, 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 the session names in reverse order. These are the different versions of this, this WinZip installation that I've created throughout this process. I select the WinZip installation and click rollback, and that will remove the files, remove the sessions, uh, the, uh, the registry keys, and anything that was done as part of packaging that software on the packager server itself. 
Now, if I move back to my package server for just a second, we also have the ability to install MSI files. And here I have a copy of Microsoft Office 2003, the, the bits that would install it. And you can see here is the, the, the pro11.msi file. This is the, the, the uh, Office 2003 professional MSI file that would be installed. I also have created an MST file. Anytime I want to install an MSI file, that file has to be configured in such a way that it does a silent installation. Or I need to use a transform, an MST file, to ensure that that MSI file happens or installs silently. Now the actual process to create that MST for a particular MSI file is going to be different depending on the, the type of application I'm trying to install. And the application vendor that you're using or, or trying to install should either include the steps for creating that MST or should have some sort of knowledge base article that will assist you with creating a transform file for their MSI file. It is, it is not a trivial process. Anytime I'm doing an MSI file, uh, installation, I'm going to have to manually copy those MSI files from the location into the package location here. So if I create a, uh, a new folder here, and I'll call it Office 2003, I'm going to need to copy all the bits from here manually into this Office 2003 location. I'll start that process here and then stop recording while it completes. Once my installer files have completed uploading to my file share, I then can create the package inside of the CMC. If I right click here on packages and choose add package, I can give the package a name. We'll call it uh, Office 2003. And then I'm going to give it a file. I'll click browse here and browse back to that uh, uh, pro11.msi file. I then get the option if I click OK to add any transforms or command line parameters. These are what I would use to make the file or the, the installation silent. In this case I have a transform so I click yes and add and then I add that transform that I had in there as well. I can add any additional command line options to, for the install or the uninstall here and click OK. Now the, the, the intent of this is to show you how to install an application using Installation Manager, not to, to show you how to install Office 2003. So the actual process of adding Office 2003 and creating a transform will probably be different depending on your installation. Really, packaging is the hard part. And once I've, I've completed the package, then I've got a repeatable process that I can use to install that same package onto multiple servers. Installing the package is a piece of cake. All I do is I right click on the package and I choose install. And I can choose the, the groups I want to do install the package to, whether that be uh, the Nugget CTX servers or I can install it to individual servers, or I can filter it based on server type. In this case, I'll just install it to, say, CTX Nugget 2. I click next and I can say, okay, this package is going to go to this server. I can give it the, uh, the job a name. I can also give it a schedule, whether it be now or later. I can choose a date and a time for when that package will get installed. And I can even force the, that package to reboot after it's complete. If I want that package to install into an isolation environment, I click this box here and then configure isolation environment settings. So there's a lot of different options I can do for getting those packages onto servers. I can right click and choose install here. I can, I can right click the server group and install the package directly through here. I can even drag and drop that package onto the server and it will begin the installation process or give the option to begin the installation process. So that's what we've discussed in this section. We've talked about deploying applications with Installation Manager. And we've talked a little bit about the art of software packaging and, and, and installing software through a package methodology and why, it, why it's useful, especially in very large uh, Citrix server farms. We've talked about the components of Installation Manager and how they interrelate. And we've also shown how you can use Installation Manager and the Packager to package both MSIs and also other installations. We've added those packages to the CMC and we've even shown how you can deploy software using the CMC through lots of servers all at once. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.